Okay, now let's talk of dissolution of corporations. What may cause dissolution of corporations? One is expiration of term. Expiration of term. Another is when the SEC <coughs> cancels the certificate of registration for any of the following causes. When the SEC cancels the certificate of registration for any of the following causes. Letter A. Uh, failure to file the bylaws within 30 days from issuance of the certificate of registration. Failure to file the bylaws within 30 days from issuance of the certificate of registration. If you remember at the start, I mentioned that the bylaws could be filed together with the articles of incorporation. But then if the bylaws is not ready by that time, the bylaws may be filed uh, after issuance of the certificate of registration, but within 30 days. All right, another cause is when the corporation fails to organize within two years from issuance of the certificate of registration. When the corporation fails to organize within two years from issuance of the certificate of registration. <clears throat> or when the corporation fails to comply with the reportorial requirements of the SEC. Uh, pag sinabi reportorial requirements, submission of reports. When the corporation fails to comply with the reportorial requirements of the SEC. And the fourth one, letter D, when the corporation fails to carry out its primary purpose for at least five years. When the corporation fails to carry out its primary purpose for at least five years. All right, now, all of these four, without any justifiable reason. Right, I mentioned four occasions that the SEC may cancel certificates of registration. Right? Now, all these four without any justifiable reason. <clears throat> okay? And the third one is when the court orders the dissolution of the corporation, uh, when the court orders the dissolution of the corporation, on a finding that it is already insolvent, on a finding that it is already insolvent, or that it was organized purposely to commit a legal wrong, or that it was organized purposely to commit a legal wrong. <coughs> All right, let's go back to the first one. First one says, uh, upon expiration of the term of the corporation. One thing nice about being a corporation is uh, it knows it has a term. Okay? Unlike us, uh, we are always on call. Uh, we don't have a fixed term. And also one thing nice about being a corporation is uh, before the term expires, if it wants, the term could be extended. In our case, much as we want to extend our term, we cannot. Okay? And there is no limit on the number of extensions of the corporate term. All right. Now about the second one, 
when the SEC cancels the certificate of registration of the corporation for any of those causes. Okay. Now, what I would like to stress about this is mere failure to file the bylaws or submit reports or failure to organize or failure to carry out the primary purpose uh, shall not uh, automatically cause the dissolution of the corporation. The SEC cannot just cancel certificates of registration for any of those causes. Why? Because the Supreme Court said that there must be a strict observance of due process pursuant to Section 1 of the Bill of Rights that no person shall be deprived of life without due process of law. So it's not automatic. And there must be observa strict observance of due process. <clears throat> okay? So let us say your corporation had not been submitting reports. And SEC canceled your certificate of registration. No problem. You can ask for its revival by invoking that you were deprived of due process. And SEC will revive, but you just pay penalties. Okay? So that's advantageous also to the SEC. It profits from your omissions. Okay? <clears throat> All right. So let us say a corporation has been dissolved. What's next? Very much like when a natural person dies. When a natural person dies, what's next? A settlement of his estate. Same thing in the case of a corporation. When a corporation had been dissolved, uh, it's not the end. Uh, it's the start of a lot of work, uh, which we call winding up or liquidation. When a natural person dies, his estate shall be settled. When a corporation has been dissolved, uh, there shall be winding up or liquidation. Very much similar processes. Because in both uh, settlement of estate and also winding up, the assets which are not in cash are first converted into cash. And then the cash that is realized shall be used to pay the obligations of the deceased or of the dissolved corporation. By the way, huh, for your info, whatever cash is generated will not be distributed pro rata among all creditors. Why not? Huh? The distribution shall be uh, in accordance with the order of preference provided in our laws. Okay? So when a corporation has been dissolved, its cash and other property shall be distributed among its creditors, not necessarily pro rata, but observing the order of preference provided in our laws. And when I say in our laws, you have the labor code and also the civil code. Uh, prorating takes place only in every order of preference. Uh, it's not an outright prorating at the start. Okay? So, ang gagawin muna dyan, oh, sige, tingnan. Ito, Order of preference number one, unpaid employees. Okay? So let us say you are all employees, you have uh, claims against the dissolved corporation, right? You will be preferred over other unsecured creditors. Okay? Uh, so let us say your total claims, two million. All right. Yung residua, yung assets lang, ha? Huh? Uh, all the assets of the corporation amount to only 1.5 million. All right, then, 
doon pa lang sa first level, prorating na. Kaya yung second, third levels, wala nang matatanggap. Why? Eh, doon pa lang sa first level, kulang na. So, malas doon na sa second and lower priorities. Alright. But then, let us say, uh, first level, uh, total claims, 2 million. Kaya lang yung cash and other assets, amounting to 3 million. So, walang problema. Everybody in the first level gets fully satisfied. So, may matitira pang 1 million. Alright. Yung 1 million shall be distributed among those in the second order of preference. Kung mayroon pa susunod, na kung may natira pa, o di punta doon sa third order of preference. Nagkakaroon na ng pro-rating only in a level where what is left is insufficient to satisfy all in that level. Okay? Oh, maliwanag. Alright, but always keep in mind that still most preferred are the secured creditors. You may mga merong mortgages or pledges in their favor. Unsecured creditors are also known as insecure creditors. Diba? If you have no collateral, insecure ka. Okay? So, unsecured, insecure, uh, synonymous when it comes to creditors. Okay? <clears throat> Keep in mind that uh, secure creditors are preferred over the properties uh, over which they have a lien. Okay? So, if you are the mortgagee of property number one, with respect to property number one, you have priority over all other creditors. If you are the pledge of property number two, then over other creditors, you enjoy priority because you have a lien. Got it? <clears throat> all right. Oh, question. How long does it take to liquidate a corporation? Answer? Correct answer is only God knows. True, only God knows. Uh, you said three years. The three year period is for the purpose of filing claims by or against the corporation. Very similar to the claims against the estate of a deceased. Under the rules of court, two years. Oh, but corporations, Three years. <clears throat> so the three-year period is for the purpose of filing claims by or against the corporation. When you file a claim against a corporation, uh, that claim will not right away be granted. It will not necessarily be approved. All right? So you file a claim with the court. Okay, then judgment is rendered in favor of one, but one party is not happy with the judgment. He appeals to a higher tribunal. The higher tribunal makes a ruling after a number of years. Still, not everybody is happy. So the one who is not totally happy still goes to the highest tribunal. And you know how long our court processes are. If you get a favorable judgment before the MTC, say in three years or five years, uh, okay na yun. Eh, meron pang appeal sa RTC. Tapos ng RTC, oh, CA. Tapos ng CA, Supreme Court. Eh, you know how efficient our courts are. Okay. Uh, I have a case before the CA until now, ten, over 10 years now, wala pa. So, if we lose or we win that case, somebody would be going to the Supreme Court and you know how better efficient the Supreme Court is. 
Okay? Though the Constitution says that the Supreme Court must decide cases within two years. But the Supreme Court interpreted the Constitution, uh, that Constitution provision, as merely directory, not mandatory. Uh, so it has its reason, uh, not, uh, it, has a, it, it has an excuse not to be able to dispose of a case within two years uh, from submission for decision. Okay? I can cite you an actual case. No, ito. Yung kaso ng Rubber World. <clears throat> rubber World had been dissolved a long time ago. Rubber World used to manufacture Converse rubber, uh, rubber shoes. That was dissolved more than 20 years ago. But I think, until now, the liquidation process has not been completed. Why? They are having a problem disposing of the obsolete factory equipment. Nobody wants to buy the obsolete factory equipment. So until they are able to dispose of those assets, the liquidation process could not be completed. Actually, uh, it has a lot of real properties, but the factory was. Uh, and to find a buyer for that property, I, I'm not sure if it was already completed, but uh, I had a talk with the receiver a few years ago. Tanong ko sa kanya, oh, ayos na ba yung liquidation ng rubber world? Sabi niya, almost. Oh, so, ibig sabihin, hindi pa. Right? And when I ask it, when I ask about it, it was already over 20 years from the dissolution of that corporation. Oh, I can give you another example. Uh, people who are over 35 years old uh, must still remember a bank known as Pacific Banking Corporation. It, it was closed way back in 1984. Until now, I think, the liquidation process has not been completed. Okay? Now, why I suspect that it has not yet been completed? Because I have a claim against it. It's not really a substantial amount. It's only 5,000 pesos. Yeah, lang ang punto. I have not received any notice about settlement of claims. Okay? Not in, not in, I'm not looking forward anymore because I'm one of the insecure creditors of that corporation. My claim consists of manager's check. And a manager's check uh, that it issued, but with, unfortunately, it was ordered closed by the BSP. So I am among the insecure creditors. All right, now let us say, let us say that the liquidation process had been completed and fortunately, after paying all the creditors, there are still residual assets. Question is, what shall be done with the residual assets? <clears throat> Alright, in the case of a stock corporation, the residual assets shall be distributed among the stockholders. If it is a non-stock corporation, the residual assets shall be distributed among the members. But if it is a foundation that enjoyed tax benefits, the residual assets shall be escheated to the government. And how would you call the share in the residual assets received by the stockholders? They are called liquidating dividends. Question, are liquidating dividends subject to income tax in as much as they are dividends? In answering that question, you qualify. Sabihin nyo, to the extent of mere return of capital, no income tax, but any amount in excess of capital is income and subject to income tax. Okay? <clears throat> All 
All right.